So about mm, maybe three or four weeks ago, I saw a post on Facebook and it was Todd Casey mentioning his art books. And I had seen the books at people's homes. I have kind of given up on buying art books because we had bought so many over years and years and years. And really, I'm just not into owning stuff like that anymore. It's the, everything you can get on the internet. So, um, but when I saw his post and I knew I was about to teach an online class, I thought this, I need to get these books because this guy has spent so much time. And I bought both the books from his website and he'd signed them and it was like they were inexpensive and came with shipping. So I told everybody and some of my friends couldn't even get them from him because he had sold out his personal stash, I guess. Well, anyway, so I messaged him on Facebook and I said, oh my God, your books are amazing. And I can't wait to share them with my class. And he wrote back and he was super nice. And he had, he lives in Connecticut, but he was going down to Tennessee to teach a workshop. And he said, well, I could stop by Winston-Salem to say hi. And I was like, whoa, okay, that sounds fun. And so he drove really late last night, is in a hotel downtown. Scott and I live half hour, 30, 35 minutes north of the city, so now we're I, my windshield is frozen. It's spring, but so I'm waiting for it to defrost. And um, and then we're going to meet him for breakfast. And then he has to drive back up to Connecticut today. So he's, I mean, I wouldn't want to do that too much driving, but I'm so happy. It was so nice that he went out of his way to come say hi to us. So we're going to go meet him for breakfast and uh, just tell him, just thank you for all the work you've done making these amazing books because they really are one of a kind. I mean, truly. Um, and uh, anyways. Thank you. I'm so excited to have Todd Casey in my studio. <laughs> he lives in Connecticut and he's going to set up and I guess do a, a podcast with me. And I wanted to see it. Like I told you, I already have his books here. And I'm going to ask you to sign some books that my friend just bought. So you're going to have to sign them to Sharon. We're so excited to have a celebrity here in Winston-Salem. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. I'm a celebrity. <laughs> you are. You're a big celebrity. For me. Thank you for going out of your way. He was driving from Tennessee, going up to Connecticut, and instead of going 81, you kept on 40. Yeah. Yeah. That's headed east. Yeah. Instead of north. So. Well, if you ever do get back to Winston Salem, um. Renolda House has a couple sergeants, but I don't know if they're hanging one of their famous ones. It might have been up at that show in Boston. Wow. And so, next time. Yeah. <laughs> so he's setting up his two cameras. So one's on him and one's on me, and then this is the microphone. And then he's gonna sit over here and we're gonna have a very deep conversation about being an artist. So how many podcasts have you done already? I think this will be... Like 15. Wow. Yeah, I just did, uh, you know Tom Root, his work? No, where does he live? He's in uh, Jonesville, Tennessee. I'll show you. Oh, okay, There's good. All his little paintings. Oh. So, hopefully I can find one of your studies. Oh. Even though it's on. <laughs> oh, guys. have it recorded. Yeah. That. Um, but I just, I'm inspired. That's why I do it. Um, and we get to get conversations. Yeah, no, I love this all just for posterity. Can you imagine if like we could see videos of artists from 1920s talking to each other? I mean, that would just be such a gift. I'm so glad you're doing this. Yay, thank you. A lot of what I was getting at Watershed GCA, Watershed mostly, was that it was um, almost purely mimetic, you know? What does that word mean? Mimetic just means copying. Like oh. mimesis is Greek for uh, how children even learn, where they just watch you and observe and copy. But then there's, I think it was Van Gogh said that conformity is a path where no flowers grow. So mm. you need to, if you want the flowers to grow, you have to kind of find your yeah, own. Yeah, it's beautiful. Way. My friend Arlene Daniels just came to my studio and showed me three books that she had ordered because I was talking to her about doing skies and being a portrait person. I always have an issue with that. And obviously a lot of these, you know, especially I think Western painters, I think a lot of Eastern um, landscape artists, you know, maybe they do a lot of overcast and it's like, 
you know, some of these Western artists have such beautiful pastels in the skies or blues. And I was talking to her about like, I really, I just don't know how to get, I guess, you know, from the horizon going up and how, you know, different times of day, you know, and Frank Tenney Johnson and Edgar Payne and all those um, painters. Well, anyway, she was so sweet. She came over to tell me about these books. And um, so this one is uh, Frank Tenney Johnson by Gary Lee Kagame. Um, I just ordered this one and I got it at a used bookstore, the um, Abe Books for like $20 plus, because it's um, from, it's 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 from Gerald Peters Gallery. He they produced it, so it was I think an old catalog that you could probably still find. Oh gosh, see this is what I want to learn. I want to learn how to do the pinks and purples and yellows and greens in the backgrounds. Um, I think I've just been very um, intimidated about doing. I've been trying to learn how to do color harmonies and just play with the color wheel. And it seems okay when I'm just doing stuff in the studio because I completely make it up. But when, you can make up colors outside too, of course, but there has to be some sense of understanding. Um, just having the idea of the horizon going up. But yeah, you can see why this guy was so freaking famous and why Pretty much all the contemporary artists are in love with him. So I thought I would just, I'm not going to buy this book. So I thought I would just kind of thumbnail through it. But that was so sweet. It's nice to have friends because she likes to take, she does online classes and she takes workshops from people. And I told her, I said, well, whenever you learn something, Whenever you learn something about skies, please let me know because I do not profess to um, understand stuff. Yeah, I love this idea of yellow skies. Scott has done that in the past and he really did that beautifully when he did some paintings from the Himba people in Africa. God. And I've been, it's funny, I, I'm definitely, I'm kind of against buying books, but to be perfectly honest with you, sometimes you just need to be able to really, you know, having a computer there is good, but being able to like just have your fingers and to have it open when you're painting something. I really love the one that's on the cover. But I'm mainly attracted to, um, look at that yellow harmony, that yellow green harmony. Gosh, I love that. And I love how chunky that horse is. I have to learn. Oh my God, look at that sky. Oh, geez. Yeah, cre having clouds be actual puzzle pieces. This is something that's important is that there is a distinct edge, just like any flower or rock. Clouds have edges. So there's there's a, a circumference or a, a contour. And not just that it just is like, has no edges and just so soft you don't see anything. Even when you have really soft clouds, they're distinct. Maybe it's just that the values aren't really dark next to it. But you learn so much about clouds too. So I thought I would just kind of thumb through this in case anybody is looking for a beautiful book on figures and out old west. Oh, that one's nice. A lot of these paintings you probably won't be able to see in museums, you know? Anyways, so that's the cover. And she showed me this one too, but I have some really good reppin' books at home, and I think these images are not the best. And but it was so nice that she thought of me. I'm at Renolda Village, which I film a lot, and I just thought these tulips were so beautiful, and it, I mean they almost look like like um 
a peony or a rose? I've never seen them this I mean, open like this with a different variation of colors. It's a little bit chilly today. But, oh my gosh, thought I would show you these. I'm getting my hair done. I'm gonna walk, oh, there's some red tulips. Nice. I'm gonna walk over and get uh, tea or coffee because it's chilly. Well, let's see what's in the windows. Oh, okay. Pajamas that are probably extremely overpriced. Oh, let's see what's in here. Oh, oh, you can get your waste paper basket and your uh, hand towels, you know, embroidered. So you can tell this stuff is like silliness. Silly work, silly money. Um, yeah. Oh, next week we go to Denver. Oh, these are nice. And so I just thought, you know what? I have not gotten my hair done in a long time. I thought I deserve it. Plus my hair looks like shit, so. This is a cute little uh, coffee tea place, but it actually um, is kind of like a donut place. And I don't think I've ever gotten donuts here. Yeah, do dojos. But um, it's in these old buildings. So yeah, this yeah, is a uh, Renolda village and all these buildings, you know, like a hundred years ago were, uh, you know, were like the horse and carriage, were the blacksmith. This was probably the old um, barns with the cows. And this place has actually been many things. And they, you know, finally it's turned it into a cute little coffee shop. I love these stones. I know, isn't that fun? Joe's. A very cute building. So I haven't done a video where I talk to the um, screen in a while because um, I think it's just awkward. <laughs> you know, it's, I, I tend to want to just show what's, I'm from seeing from my point of view, I forget that uh, some of you guys might not even know what I look like. So I thought, okay, I, I thought, you know, this is my hair, this is pretty. I don't get my hair highlighted that much. And um, it was looking pretty blah. And next week, Scott and I are going to um, Denver because I'm teaching a workshop and Scott comes with me a lot to when I do the workshops. And so he just paints along and you're really like getting two for one because he'll talk and you get to watch him paint all day. Um, so he literally will just, usually our workshops, it's my workshops, um, you have a different model for each five days. Recently, maybe in the last year or so, I've been doing it sometimes where you might have a two day pose. Um, but in general, yeah, I don't know why. I know some artists do it where you actually have one pose all week and you just work on one thing. I just don't know if, I, if that's my personality. I don't know if that's something that would interest me. Um, so that's how we do it. We tend to do different approaches, um, different color harmonies, sometimes even different canvases or surfaces. Um, I think it just is a refreshing thing because in general, in a workshop, you're trying to cram in a lot of information in a few days. And um, it's like getting, you know, a whole semester or more in like five days. And that's, I guess I get off on that energy because um, I like to talk when I demo. And um, I actually really, I really not, I don't really like it when places want me to just teach all day because I feel then like you're hovering, you know, I feel like, okay, well, how much do you help somebody? How much do you like walk around? And then, and then a lot of times when you're just letting people paint, you're just sitting there in the corner or you, I feel like I'm not really doing anything. So I like the, the idea of, you know, I like the idea of Scott just painting all day. People can watch him. I think it really does show you a lot of how someone would block in and then finish a piece. So he'll be working for like almost six hours, you know, like literally the three in the morning and the three in the afternoon. Um, 
I wish I could do that. Uh, I tend to do three hour demos in the morning and then after lunch, I, I walk around and I make sure, I mean, I'm pot, I make sure that I visit everybody twice and sometimes people even more because, um, yeah, I, it's just, you know, Scott and I will just stay as long as it takes. Um, and I do know I've had it in the past where I've seen teachers or I've even been in situations where like a teacher doesn't even come to you once, you know, and you're like, well, I don't know. I think Scott and I just have this sense of like, um, obligation and this we're getting paid and we really want to help people so uh, almost maybe we overshare <laughs> we maybe help too much you know um, but I just thought okay I just talk a little bit about what's happening in our lives and um, the five-week on uh, online course was amazing I really enjoyed it. it was the first time I did it all by myself and Scott helped me but uh, it really helped me understand that I can do these and I don't have to rely on other people to like host them and um, through our Patreon Scott and I've started to do these like once a month um, hang out and paint along because the reason why I started it was because I would mentor I do mentoring one-on-one -on -one with people and some of the people literally are, are, are isolated you know people who either because of health issues or because of where they live um, they can't get to workshops or they don't have art groups. And I wanted, you know, at least this kind of get together and it's for all tiers where Scott and I offer it a reference and maybe in the future we'll have a live model, but for now, Scott and I will eat, be painting on separate references, things that we have always wanted to paint on. And um, so for this is how I set it up. So there'll be a high definition camera on Scott and he'll be sitting down here and, he, and we turn that table a little bit. So he looks at that big monitor. And then, you know, I will be painting over here at my monitor and I will have a camera over there for me. Also, I have, you know, my other, this is the monitor that I use to do Zooms and all my business stuff. And um, that's my main monitor to when I do online classes, the one I'm talking to face to face. So a lot of times for these online, these hangout paint alongs once a month, I will have that camera going and then I'll have two separate boxes. You know, you know on Zoom, there's boxes. So the, the class can actually go through, or class, this is not a class, it's a hangout, um, can kind of click on my box if they just wanna see what I'm painting for a while. And then they could, you know, highlight Scott's box. Um, and it's up to them, you know. Um, we listen to music. And then on breaks, I, I will take breaks every 25 minutes and we'll just talk. And then in the beginning, when people are coming on, I like saying hi to people and meeting people. And um, I learned so much. People are always telling me about new things that I did not know about. And so that way everyone can share. I don't record the Zoom for future because I kind of want these things to be special and to be in the moment. I think Scott and I might start re actually recording what we paint maybe for future or to post those, but just the chat, just the talking, I want you know anybody to be able to talk and not be nervous that they're gonna be on a future video. You know, we could just talk and hang out. Um, people can paint along because um, I share my reference and Scott shares his reference and to the group on the site the day before. So they can paint what we're painting or they can paint on their own thing. It really is more just, a, you know how it's funner to just paint with people and know they're in the background and it sometimes it makes you paint longer and you feel kind of comforted knowing that there's a whole bunch of other people doing the same thing you're doing now if you if it's not comfortable for you to paint along or for or you just want to join in for 20 minutes you know you can kind of just pop on watch us or just hang out and watch the whole time and chat during the breaks you could do like house you know you could like vacuum and then come back and hang out and then and then do laundry and come back and hang out i mean why not um another thing i wanted to talk about is uh so i'm in this western show in june and i it, i've been in it for 10 years so this june coming up will be my 11th and um it's a big show and i've always always personally struggled with the subject matter, struggled with, um, I'm definitely, there's no, it, it's fact that I am the cheapest artist in the whole show. And um, 
it's oh you know that's not a problem for me but it's let's just say I've, I've tried my hardest over the 10 years to sort of push you know kind of be in a western traditional all-american genre and still get inspired and, and Scott and I have both straddled it. Now Scott gets away with it more. Um, so sometimes he will literally almost paint psychedelic stuff and get away with it and nobody, people applaud him for it. And then for me, like, um, so I sent uh, three pastels and an oil last year. I sold two and um, I, you know, I got a lot of compliments, but I guess that didn't matter because I've just sold two. Now, obviously the show does not make a ton of money off of me. So they're, they're thinking, is it worth it for her to stay in the show? Um, I mean, over the years, I've seen lots of artists never show up. I mean, they want you to come in and they almost pressure you to come to the show. So you feel obligated to pay for expensive airlines and hotels and, you know, shipping and all this stuff. And they want you to put them in special boxes and crates. And so it's a large expense. And um, so I got a phone call from the museum saying, you know, the, the committee, you know, is just suggesting that they want my stuff to be more Western. And, um, you know, it, did, it deflated me because I was thinking of sending some other things or I was, you know, I still try and straddle it but it totally deflated what I was going to send because I then stopped working on those. And then I did four pieces and one I'm actually not sending just because I don't even have the heart to finish it. You know, over my career, I've had lots of situations where um, shows or whatever deadlines and sending things that maybe you're not super happy with and how it could it, it's soul killing it, it really is and you're constantly having these internal conversations with yourself um i do know that sometimes limitations can maybe spark um, creativity but for me i don't i don't think that works for me i just don't think it does and you know every time i feel like i'm selling myself you know, selling my soul or whatever, selling my soul to the devil kind of thing. Um, I just don't think my work is as good as I would want it to be because it's not completely true to myself. I have stayed in the show voluntarily because I felt like out of a hundred artists, there's like seven women. And, you know, I want to be that voice of like, I don't know why, you know, why is it important to me? You know, um, I guess I just wanted to get this off my chest because I'm never going to talk about this again. And um, so I have three pastel, well, actually one charcoal and two pastels, all of little girls on horses. You know, fine. Uh, who knows if they'll sell or not. Um, are they my favorite pieces I've ever done? No. One is maybe, uh, okay, I could live with, but... Um, you know, it's just an interesting thing about limitations and shows or galleries art directing and telling you what they want and it limits creativity. It limits expansion is what it does. And and we'll see what happens. You know, it, it's gonna be a real telling. Does, does my stuff sell? I'm pricing it to sell. Um, does it not? Will I get another phone call? Will I just not be asked again? Um, you know, and, and sometimes, you know how we all go through life and we, uh, you know, intuition. What should I be doing? What should I be painting? You know, what's the most important thing to me? And, you know, I'm getting older. I'm in middle age, right? So I've gone through these things where I've asked myself tons and tons of questions about what really makes me happy. I know I need a little bit of fire under my feet. I know that I need deadlines to finish things because I love to start stuff. It's hard for me to finish things. Um, I love teaching. I know that as I've gotten older, that is extremely important to me because I feel that I like being transparent. I like, um, I, I can remember struggle. I mean, cause I still do it. So I, even if I've been painting or drawing all this time, I still 
can I understand what it's like to be confused and to be frustrated and and it's just even in the technicality of art just literally trying to get form you know trying to get light trying to get color harmonies um, so I feel like I can help people I can I can support people in that I can um, and it, it rewards me it, it is you know I don't know if I'll ever make a lot of money teaching but meaning that it's not important I say that because I don't I don't see it as a road to riches. I see it as a road to like feeling good every morning when I wake up. Um, so classes, online classes, Patreon, think, making videos, mentoring people one-on-one. -on -one, I know that that is my future. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna go pick up the three uh, pieces at the framer today and I'll, I'll video them a little bit so you can see them, but I just want to see, you know, what happens with my work. And I, it honestly, my prices are going to be so reasonable that if I spent a, a airplane ticket and, you know, going out to eat for four days, I probably, <laughs> let's say, I don't know, I might break even, you know, um, it's, it's not a money maker for me. Let's just say my prices. Anyways, I thought I'd show you a little bit of my studio. So this is a still life that has been ongoing. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. It's been ongoing. I started that from life in my home studio from my north light windows. And I had, you know, fruits and things in it and they all kind of died. And I had to take a photo before the fruits totally got petrified. And over the years, I've tweaked it. I've worked on it. I tweaked it. And um, it's the type of thing that I never really had a, a place to send it to. And so it's it gets turned around, forgotten about. And I just thought, you know what? I'm in limbo right now because I did those three pastels for the show. I'm in between time, got my hair, you know, nice. You know, my hair is a little bit nicer. And um, next Friday we leave for Denver. We'll be gone for a week. And then we're just home for like four days, four and a half days. And then we go to Atlanta for the Portrait Society. Um, and I don't really have any big deadlines. There's another show in August, but the wonderful thing about the show in August is at a gallery in Denver, there's no subject. There's, you know, there's no like, you have to do this or not do that. And so you have a little bit more freedom. Um, I have that charcoal was for a demo. The still life was just fun. I ha and that other one was just working on a color harmony. And so these are things that I start sometimes for videos, for demos. Um, and maybe there's just like, they don't totally get finished. So they get turned around. I even have these things. You, I don't know if you've watched other videos, the girl in the white colorful blouse. That was started a very long time ago also. And then I have the one of the boy with the drum. And that was started. And then I have one from Africa. You see, you can see it far away. Mother and child from Tanzania. So the boy is from, um, he's from Guatemala. And um, so sometimes I start these things and um, I'm a slow painter, but I, I, since I, maybe I don't have an exact deadline, I, um, they get put aside a tiny bit. And um, in May, I'm going to have my art group come back. So when I have my art group come once a week, the problem is I can't leave all these things out. So, I mean, I love seeing my friends and all that stuff. And it really gets me doing figure and portrait on a regular basis. But I have to put these away because I kind of clear out my studio to have, you know, a bunch of people and have a model over here. So, yeah. I'm still trying to figure out balance in my life. Um, so today I'm also going through brushes because, you know, um, it's so easy to forget stuff when you are packing to paint on a trip. So uh, I got my little pochade, uh, kneeling apron, some canvases together, a thing for mineral spurs. I've definitely forgotten even jars for mineral spurs before. I'm going through my brushes. I have so many brushes, but I'm going through them just to make sure that they're completely clean, that okay, that um, I have multiple different sizes 
Um, it's like packing for anything. You get on a trip and you're like, God, I wish I had that brush. Or so I'm kind of trying to be proactive. Um, what else am I doing today? I don't know if I'm gonna have time to touch up something like this, um, something, one of these, um, doing some computer work. Yeah, just kind of getting stuff ready for the workshop next week. I have to, every single workshop has different supply lists, which um, is endlessly frustrating. So I have to actually research through my old emails and go, what did, what supply list did I tell them? And it's not so much the colors or the brushes. It's sometimes I, I have a specific workshop where we're working on, you know, like we're working on a, a tone board, like a gray board. Um, recently I've been loved doing stuff on black. So did I tell them we're working on black? So I don't know. I have to look to make sure that I bring that, you know, I always find supply lists just a little bit silly because I've noticed that people don't really stick to them. And, um, which is great. I tell people don't spend tons of money on new art supplies because it really doesn't matter. You know, unless, an, unless a teacher has something so specific, which I'm not so specific, you know, um, just use what you have. Um, and then, oh, so today is Thursday and Sunday, April 7th, Scott and I are doing our paint along. So I'm making sure I need to know what I'm gonna paint and I'm setting up Scott's little station um, so that when we come back here on Sunday, we can do that and get that going. And um, I guess I just wanted to say hi, just in case you haven't seen my face in a long time. This is a long talk, but, um, and thank you for watching my videos and I appreciate it. And I just, I think I want, I needed to talk a little bit about being told what to paint and how it really, really stunted me. Um, I mean, it hurt my feelings a little bit, but more than that, I'm pretty strong. I can get over that stuff, but um, it just made me not want to do anything for it and made me not want to do anything special for it. And I know they're trying to put me, jump, make me jump through hoops. And um, I do think it's a little bit chauvinistic because I think they would never say that to Scott. Um, he also makes them a lot more money, but um, I think it's easier to, for them to tell me that. I'm just more expendable. And, uh, and that's what it is, you know? I'm in Scott's studio. Those are the um, pastels that I picked up yesterday. And here are some of the little portraits that I've done in my studio. And I like to bring things to workshops or classes to show um, as examples, you know, just in, because when you're painting or teaching from life, I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, sometimes things don't um, maybe work out or maybe my lessons are so much lessons. That needs to be spray varnished. Um, and oh, and um, so these are things that I've done as demos or done from life recently. And so ideas about painting on different surfaces, like museum boards, different colors, and, um, you know, just examples of different color harmonies and just painting really tiny. And uh, so I bring these to the classes. And um, so Scott, would you open these? So these are boxes that we buy. Um, airfloatsystems.com. And one thing I wanted, to, these are pretty expensive, right, Scott? So one thing that you realized was that if you buy, what, two or more, they come in a bigger box. Well, yeah, they come in boxes. And then if you're like, you have two of these, uh, well, when they ship them, they'll ship them whichever is cheapest way. So they'll like actually like put two of these together mm -hmm. so they're one package so when i ship them like when i ship these to, to pre to west these two there's a certain size that if you go above there's a huge jump fedex in price. fedex and ups has the same all of them has the same there's a cutoff so if you check the price you can see what it is so for me two of these if i ship them individually they'll be like you know 70 80 dollars 70 80 dollars individually but if i put two of them together and then like 
you can either use tape or that kind of plastic stuff. The plastic and, rolling, you know, wrap that isn't yeah. isn't sticky, but it holds things together. Right. And so what I'll do is I'll put two of them together, and I'll just use that wrap on them really well, so they're one package. And then maybe it's just ten dollars more. Right. For the two so you're of them saving together. money. And I just wanted to say that when you order these boxes through Airfloat Systems. These boxes are expensive. And then not only are you paying for the boxes, then you're paying for them to ship you the damn boxes. Right. And so you order definitely two or sometimes three or four at a time. I usually order five oh. at a time because there's a 20% discount for ordering five. So I just ordered big ones for these two paintings, for this one and this one. And the boxes are and those. Just... That's 36 by 36. And what's that size? Is that 40? This is 36 by 36, oh. this is 30 by 30. Oh, really? Um, this has, has an optical I, I, illusion. I got one of these frames here. It's like a floater frame, and I painted it black. And, so and this, you actually ordered that off of eBay. I ordered that, and it's a place in Los Angeles that makes them, and I got three of them. And it's very lightweight. They're about $90 And even piece. though this is a canvas wrap, it doesn't really look important enough, and the, and the canvas wrap is too thin. It's a thinner one. So this can go in this, and then like this. I painted it black. Because it comes naked, and right? And then on the back, I'll have a wire that goes, I'll, I'll actually just put it in the frame, it's uh, in the um, canvas, canvas itself, and then there's room to hire. Uh, so, so that's just an wire. inexpensive, very contemporary way of framing something, and that's a more contemporary painting. So I ordered painting. two boxes for these two, and they're, they're actually, the, the big boxes, they, they will be under the size I checked the price. So it would cost like, um, I think like $90 to ship from North Carolina to Oklahoma. To Oklahoma. And so they're just under. If I had put this in a big, big frame, it would have went over, and yeah. that would have been like $285. So um, to, Just to ship one way. Just to ship one. The shipping has gone way up from what it was. Uh, so I ordered uh, those two bigger boxes from Airflow, and then I just ordered three smaller ones, which will... Work so for the smaller whole, ones. why that way you get twenty percent discount yeah, and they're good. shipped all together. And well, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because. Um, but you were saying that that when when Airfloat ships these two boxes to you, they put it in a bigger box, they right? They put each one in an individual box. So like these box, this oh, is the outside box right. that. So you kind box of get three boxes for two. Well, you actually get four because each one is in its own individual. Then they'll tape those together oh, uh, oh. to ship them. So you're actually, so I'll use this also for yeah. something else. We're going to use that. Uh, for the museum shows, oftentimes they require it be in something like this because. Or a crate. Or a wood crate. Uh, because then they don't have to worry about damage as much. And these are nice because they're so easy. You just open it up. And so, th so the foam is totally solid, and then you cut it out. So what happens is this has a bottom piece, and then this is the top piece, and I just put. So it let me show people that. So see how this is loose, right. and then there's another one that goes on the top. So right. you, and then this I one is over. what you would cut, and they're very here. easy to cut, people. So this would go like this. Yeah. To and secure it and make it. What I do is I just put this on top of this piece and yeah. you can see where the Sharpie is and I just trace it and then I cut out with just These scissors. These are perfect for framing anything, I mean, shipping anything that has plexi or glass or pastels. And even the piece that was cut off, mm -hmm. uh, I can use that. Yeah, this is that this interior. Right. So it, it does come with a whole bunch of stuff and it is the more professional way of shipping. Hey, Scott, would you just lift that piece up? Because I never um, videoed this piece. Just oh, kind of, yeah, lift it up. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is a pastel of a little girl. This was done on, I think, the Mi Tientes or Art Fix paper that has slightly sanded and it's this beautiful light aqua. And I had a hard time understanding like, what mat to put on it um i what are you doing oh, I just you're like looking weird okay like little hair. okay and so this was a frame we had already and it was a gold frame and i actually toned it black um and then just kept that gold slight edge so um so this is one of the pieces that i'm going to send and this is about like an 18 by i'm gonna say 20 something um maybe 28 um, so that's that size. Okay, I just wanted to video it. And then your other one is underneath here. Yeah. So you see how easily box. it slips right in there. So yeah, you just put these down. These boxes are expensive, you guys, though. And I was mentioning before how, you know, just that upfront cost. I mean, it could be hundreds of dollars just to buy these things and then get them shipped to you. And then you have to pay for shipping off. 
Honestly, I've gotten so tired of making crates that yeah. it's, it's worth it. For no, me. I get it. So if you would lift that one yeah. up. Okay, so this is a um, this is another one of those sheets of paper that has just the tiniest bit of a texture. It's not super rough. Um, this is non-glare plexi too. And this uh, is a reference from the Fiesta from San Antonio. And the framer, I don't know if you can tell, see there's the slightest bit of a shadow. So sometimes people would put spacers in the frame, but if you have a mat like this, the framer was telling me that he will put a spacer behind this, meaning like an extra uh, thickness of like gator board or foam core, so that if any pastel falls, now this is pretty thin and I have sprayed it, but if any pastel falls, it will literally fall behind behind the mat. So you won't see how sometimes you guys would see like, look, that's just like static cling. Plexiglass attracts yeah. dust easily. But you won't have any pastel in front of the mat. Right. right. And uh, this is the non-glare plexiglass yeah. you might have already yeah. said. Yeah. So it's, it's really nice. You don't and have that's kind of a contemporary, simple, you know, frame. Yeah. Like Nondescript. That. Hopefully, you know, nobody would be upset at that frame. It's That's the thing is that sometimes with us, you frame stuff and then people want a frame credit and then you're like, oh, mother. Mm -hmm. But, um, did you get that one? Okay, and then this one is a frame, which is so interesting. It's such a um, very specific. So you see the Western, and what the, what the framer did was he actually took leather and he kind of tied it to create this, um, and then he just, uh, this is very rough wood and has this, you know, this is real gold. I mean, this, this drawing is not important enough for this frame. But this frame is 14 by 18, so it's a, you know, it's maybe not a standard size that we do all the time. And this is a strict um, charcoal. So this is just charcoal with white chalk. And I and this is another, like, sanded paper. I think, gosh, I think this is maybe Selenier card paper. But, I mean, this frame, I'm going to say, is like 250 or more. So this drawing does not deserve this frame. But I felt that it was just very, very... Um, what is it like apro apropos or something? Mm -hmm. Because it's such a Western. It's beautiful. It's it such a Western that. look that maybe it would elevate that drawing. And also, I don't think it's hard to put. We don't do just like strict, strict Western. So to even just to do a portrait in that frame would be hard because it almost would have to have like a cowboy or anyways. But Scott is going to use that bigger box that came free and use the extra um, foam stuff, which is so awesome, and wrap that particular painting in there. Thanks, I just wanted to come in here and show people how we pack specially drawings. And um, this does make life a little bit easier, but we're paying for it. Life is complicated. Pay for it either way, with time. <laughs> or sweat, tears, yeah. blood. Yeah. yeah. Okay, bye. <laughs>